Good afternoon. I'm Commission Chair Jay Zembauer here to talk about updates here in Seminole County. We welcome uh, everybody that's able to attend from the media today and thank you for helping us get out the messages. We also want to take an opportunity to thank all of our first responders, our health care workers, which uh, are, are doing great work and working around the clock to protect our citizens. There's a lot of things happening at a rapid pace right now, as some of you may be aware. There's a recent uh, executive order from the governor that has recently been released at a stay-at-home order. We're in the process of receiving that and uh, understanding what that says and what that means as compared to what uh, we as a county have put in place. And I think that uh, as we get into that, there'll be more information forthcoming. And so we're really here today to talk about uh, some of the impacts this you know, virus and unfortunate situation has had on a lot of our 501c3 uh, corporations and some of those nonprofits that really are doing you know great work or trying to do great work during this outbreak and this epidemic you know traditionally uh, a lot of them are serving meals and providing services for a lot of our needy residents in our community and with this unfortunate event they've been impacted you know to a great extent as well with as you can imagine a lot of people are hurting in the community we have a lot of people that have been laid off we have businesses that are hurting we have the folks that now need assistance uh, for rental assistance, which that number is beginning to tick up pretty high. So we have all these challenges. Uh, the good news is here in Seminole County, we have good staff that are tracking that. On top of that, we're looking for the assistance that's coming both from the federal and state level to help fill some of those voids and help those people that need it the most. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alan Harris, our emergency management director, who's going to go into some detail and hear from those uh, nonprofits with us today. And again, thank all the folks in our community for doing what's best and staying at home as much as you can. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Chairman Zimbauer. Uh, Alan Harris, uh, again, the emergency manager here for Seminole County. Uh, just a few moments ago, of course, uh, everyone that was monitoring the news saw the executive order uh, discussed from the governor. Uh, we also have a, a, an executive order in place that was in place over the weekend, and that, of course, limits uh, businesses uh, to have the spacing, so six feet in between employees and employees and then employees and then patrons, uh, and also uh, limits business meetings, uh, events, trainings to less than 10 people uh, following the CDC guidance. Uh, in addition, we had uh, Section 2 of that executive order, which went into effect on Monday, uh, limited the amount of individuals at any social gathering to 10 or less people. Uh, to avoid any confusion, because there was some confusion, well, does this, uh, does this take effect to marriages and funeral services and spiritual events and other, all, all those other types of events? Uh, we have signed an executive order today uh, that hopefully will clarify that. Uh, so uh, we looked at the executive order of the governor, and the executive order of the governor does say that uh, faith organizations can, can continue to meet, and we are not saying that they cannot continue to meet. Uh, but in Seminole County, uh, they must be, again, uh, less than 10 people, so you can have the smaller groups. This follows the CDC guidance, and it also follows the President's Coronavirus Guidelines for America. Uh, so we are saying that uh, you can continue to have services, you continue to have marriage, you continue to have uh, your fraternal organization or social club can meet if they want. Uh, this also includes community centers, clubhouses, event halls, theaters, recovery groups, associations, social clubs, fraternal organizations, but 10 or less people following the CDC guidance and also following the president's uh, coronavirus guidelines for America. Uh, it does, uh, in, the, in the guidelines, it does say that all those gatherings, if you do have a gathering, that you should cancel and, of course, move those to smaller groups, and the smaller groups would be 10 or less people. We are uh, saying that uh, in, if you have those uh, groups and those meetings, that they need to, you need to space individuals out. Uh, so maybe if a Sunday school class wants to meet for Easter services or uh, whatever the case may be, uh, you can have that smaller group, but try to space the individuals out uh, six feet. That uh, follows the CDC guidelines. 
Uh, the regional testing site uh, was open today for in individuals in Seminole County, Orange County, and Osceola County uh, for anyone that had pre-existing conditions, no matter what the age. Uh, all 250 tests were fulfilled uh, within hours of that testing site being opened. Uh, so that we, we know that that was a need and uh, they're going to continue that operation uh, to get those individuals uh, in the younger ages, uh, under 65, uh, the, the availability to get those tests. So again, that's at the Orange County Convention Center. Uh, currently here in Seminole County, we have 124 confirmed positive COVID-19 uh, cases in our county. 100 of those, 118 of those are Seminole County residents, 118 are Seminole County residents. Uh, the remaining are individuals that uh, have traveled to the area. They may have been visiting family or they may have just traveled to the area and uh, they got stuck here because they started to have the symptomology and then identified uh, that they had COVID-19. Uh, 13 of those uh, positive cases are hospitalized in our hospitals and we track uh, all of our hospitals availability, their bed availability every day. Uh, we are happy to report so some good news. Nine of the cases uh, that were um, COVID-19 uh, positive have now been cleared uh, by the Department of Health. Uh, so that is uh, some good news uh, out in our community. Uh, currently, we have uh, 347 individuals that are self-isolating and quarantining uh, in, the, in the county. And uh, the services that we provide uh, to those individuals have been uh, food services, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, pet care. Uh, we don't want the person to leave the house if they're isolating and quarantine or if they are uh, COVID-19 positive. So we don't want them to leave their house. But the only way for us to do those types of services, provide food and other types of services, is with the partnership of our nonprofit organizations. We have three nonprofit organizations today that have been instrumental during this entire event. Without them, we would not have been able to provide the food and other services that allowed those individuals to stay in their home. Those, the, the services uh, include Harvest Time International, the Sharing Center, and Meals on Wheels. And I, I cannot thank them enough for the amount of support they get, have given us in emergency management, but Seminole County in general, and the community of Seminole County, and then those that are uh, hurting the most, those that are at home stuck with a fever, cough, shortness of breath, things like that. Uh, they were, they, because of these three organizations, those individuals were able to stay at home, uh, not transmit the virus to other individuals, uh, and, and were able to get the needed supplies. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Sherry Fincher, uh, Director of Meals on Wheels, to say a few words. Good afternoon. I have with me Chef Delano, our kitchen manager. Um, I just want to let you know that Meals on Wheels is operational. Our kitchen is producing meals for our clients Monday through Friday. And we have a phenomenal uh, group of volunteers that are staying with us and delivering those meals. And we are also preparing frozen meals and shelf stable meals. And we are providing those to people in the county who are not our clients but have special needs or are homebound. And uh, so we have ability to provide those as well. We are open from 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. And if you have need for meals, uh, please call us, 407-333-8877. Uh, we have a limited ability to deliver the meals to you. We'd like for you to have a caregiver or family member pick them up. But if you don't, let us know, and we'll do our best to get them to you. Delano, do you have anything? You said everything. Okay. Thank All you. right. Thank you very much. Yes, my name is Andres Wolinski from Harvest Time International. Thank you, Alan, for having us and talk about Harvest Time International. Um, many know us in the community from our disaster relief efforts from hurricanes, tornadoes, or the earthquake back in 2010. Um, and we do that type of work every day. We send relief from our relief center in Lake Mary to countries like Haiti and Jamaica. Um, and as you know, many of these countries don't need a disaster to need assistance. Um, and we 
provide food and non-food items also to other nonprofits, to, for example, to the Rescue Outreach Mission here in Sanford and larger organizations um, in the country. But in terms of um, local help, we have our Community Hope Center in Sanford, which is open right now. Um, we serve around 400 clients daily. Um, we installed actually before Aaron, Alan and the team um, put out the order, we installed plexiglass and we already did the markings on the floor to keep our clients six, six feet apart. We installed um, plexiglass in our offices that, that we can still communicate with the clients while still keeping a distance and not um, being directly in their face. The Community Hope Center is a membership-based program to assist low-income and financially distressed families. Normally, we go by a 200-person federal poverty level, um, but at this time, if someone lost a job and is just struggling to pay their bills, they can come in, they can become a member, and we are waiving currently all membership fees. Um, this program is open for Seminole County and surrounding counties. It's not just for this county. Um, it's open Tuesday to Saturday, 9 to 5 p.m., um, if you ever, if a client had a membership card before, they can use it right now. Um, we're not looking at expiration dates. They can use a prior card without renewing. We also added an extra hour for senior, seniors and at-risk dropping Thursday morning from 8 to 9. Just so um, we have less clients. Last Thursday, we really had only like a handful of clients during that time. But they, they were very appreciative that they can come in and get the items they need. Um, we are able to hold back some items, even like toilet paper and items they normally can't get. Um, the program is designed to be a hand up. It's not a handout program. It's similar set up to a grocery store. So it's all about dignity that when people come in, they can pick the items they like. As much as we do with Alan in this program, um, packing a box for a family, we still believe if they come in and pick the items they want, if they can, obviously if they're quarantined, they can. But other than that, we like for them to come and pick the items they like. Um, the goal is keeping, reducing um, common household expenses by around 50%. Um, when they can get diapers, for example, or um, at half the price, they can, it helps the family a lot. Um, items we have in Sanford would be, um, we have bread right now. We picked up bread this morning. We have, um, bread is actually free up to one loaf per family. But we also have, I looked before I went here, we have a lot of baby food. We have baby food jars, um, like for a quarter. Um, we have health and beauty items. We have cleaning items. Um, we have diapers. Paper goods, we have toilet paper coming in. Of course, it goes quickly, but we limit those amounts. Um, we, have, we have a lot of frozen meat um, for a dollar a pound. We have frozen turkey in our freezers that clients can get for a dollar a pound. And we also accept food stamps. So they can actually use food stamps benefits um, families to stretch the food stamp dollars. Um, when we talk about volunteers, we get the question a lot. Do we need volunteers? Yes, we do. Of course, we limit the amount of volunteers right now. Um, but at the same time, we also have some staff staying home that are at a certain age just to not expose them. Um, but we need volunteers. Um, we have that information on our website. Um, we need food and non-food don donations to um, keep up with demand. And we also pick up um, large donations from local businesses. Um, thank you so much. Good afternoon. Thank you, Alan, for inviting the Sharing Center to join you today. The Christian Sharing Center, and on behalf of all the families we serve, we want to say thank you to the community that have really rallied up and calling us on a daily basis of how can we help the Sharing Center on a regular basis as this pandem pandemic continues. So the Sharing Center, unfortunately, we had to close a lot of our retail operation to one, keep our staff, volunteers, and our customers safe. All of our service providing departments are still open. And so, for instance, um, the two departments that are providing direct services, uh, first is the OASIS, which is Seminole County's only homeless resource drop-in center. It is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Some of the services we are still providing are laundry service, uh, a shower facility for our homeless clients to come in and get cleaned up, food for the homeless population. And regardless of where you slept the night before, regardless what county you're coming from, if you can get to our campus in Longwood, you will receive service as a homeless individual. The pantry is also available, and that is for all Seminole County residents and those in need. And according to a Heart of Florida United Way report called the Alice Report, 
meaning the asset limited income constraint employed um, population. That represents about 39% of Seminole County population. At the current time, I'm positive that 39% is a lot higher because a lot of those in our community are unemployed. And so if you need food assistance, please come to our pantry Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Again, we've had an overwhelming request of how can we as a community come together and help the Sharing Center. In response to that, we are launching a virtual pantry drive. So starting today, I guess, um, officially, if you go to the sharingcenter.org and just click on the uh, pantry drive, you'll see a list of items that are needed. And the reason we're doing this virtually for two reasons. First is to keep all of you uh, donors and supporters safe in the safety of your home, and you can donate in front of your computer. And secondly, through our partnership with uh, Second Harvest Food Bank, we're able to leverage that $1 you donate and turn that into purchasing $30 worth of healthy proteins such as chicken breast and hamburger meat. And so we can stretch your dollars to help more families in need during this time of crisis. Um, so thank you once again for supporting the Sharing Center. And if you have any questions, you may call our direct hotline 407-260-9155. Or visit the sharingcenter.org. Thank you again. Uh, thank you again, Nina, uh, Sherry, uh, Delano, um, and Andre. Really appreciate the services. A lot of people have asked us uh, how can we donate to Seminole County? How can we help these people that are in isolation and quarantine? Uh, these are the three agencies that have been doing an incredible amount of work to help those people that are isolated and quarantined. Uh, so uh, just uh, when, you, when you are thinking about that, look at these organizations uh, as they've been providing food and other materials uh, uh, to the, the individuals that are stuck in their homes uh, and some sick. Uh, we are simulcasting this uh, on another network as well, and we've had some questions. So one of the questions that we had before I open it up for other questions is, well, which executive order it, uh, is, takes effect? Uh, so tomorrow at midnight, the gov governor's order takes effect, and that means non-essential businesses based on his executive order will have to close, okay? Those that continue to stay open must follow the executive order of Seminole County. That means that they must, that everybody must be six feet apart from each other. If you are an essential business, you still have to have 10 or less people in meetings and trainings, okay? So that's a little, uh, it, it, in Seminole County, again, it's gonna be a little bit more strict than maybe some other counties where uh, you could be at a grocery store and everything's, everyone's kind of bunched up together. Uh, in our county, you must have the markings on the ground, which all of our grocery stores now and most of the department stores and other stores, uh, uh, convenience stores, things like that, already have the markings on the ground. Uh, they must have the queue lines and they must uh, determine uh, what their fire code is and 30% of that fire code is only allowed in the building at, the, at any given time. And with that, I'll open up any questions. Alan, with the numbers for the COVID positive cases, you mentioned some have uh, been cleared. Yes. Do those numbers come off of that total amount? Or so that's an excellent question and no, they do not. Uh, so the Department of Health is maintaining the number. So the numbers in the state of Florida at this time will always just continue to go up, okay? Uh, they will never uh, go down, which is very weird, and I, I know that that's, I know they're looking at how they're gonna change that, but currently the numbers are continuing to go up. But uh, I need to pull, uh, just turn to that again, just to make sure I, I say the right numbers. 124 confirmed cases here in Seminole County from the beginning. Uh, so nine of those uh, have, have cleared. So the Department of Health is no longer uh, reviewing those cases. Uh, they have no symptomology of COVID-19 and it's been the, uh, beyond the 14 days. Uh, so they can go to an essential business if they want to. They can go to the grocery store if they want to. Is that only nine since this started or is that nine in the last day? Or so that's, that's nine total. So nine total. yeah, so 124 have tested positive over the whole time. Nine have come off the list, if you will. And if you could, Alan, I know that everybody's having a difficult time because there are so many rules and regulations that are flying around. 
you guys have always advocated that once you pass this social distancing ordinance, that it was even more strict than stay at home. Now we have a statewide stay at home order, even though there are essential businesses where people can still go out of their houses to sure. run errands and all that. You still believe that what you have in place is more protective and more strict. Absolutely. So it, it has been, the six feet has not changed. That, that guidance has been around since we started talking about COVID-19 and got reports uh, from Asia. So we absolutely, the CDC guidance says that, the president uh, said that, the White House medical staff has said that. So of course we want to maintain six feet distance. Uh, we are requiring it in this county. The, the, the president, the CDC both agree groups of less than 10 people. So that uh, we, sh we shouldn't have to require that, but we do require that in Seminole County, less than 10 people. Uh, we've asked, uh, we've been asked a, a myriad of different questions uh, upstairs in our citizens hotline. Well, is it okay to go to the playground? No, uh, there's COVID-19 out in our community. Do not take your child to a playground and do not have them play with more than 10 people and try to maintain distance. So uh, it, it's simple guidance. Uh, if anyone's watched the news, this is a dangerous virus. This is a pandemic. We need to take this seriously. Yet people still can go for a walk. Absolutely. Go to the nature trails as long as they maintain space, correct? Right. We are, uh, Seminole County has been Florida's natural choice. That's been our motto for a long time. We have amazing trails. Just don't group together when you're on our trails. You can still go to the park. Don't have your children play on the playground. All of our playgrounds are closed anyways, and the ones that we couldn't close have signage all over them. We took the rims off the basketball court so that people wouldn't get together and, and gather in groups at, in, in basketball courts. Uh, we've, we've heard from, unfortunately, some people saying, well, I'm young, so it won't affect me. Well, it affects your mom. It affects the person at the Publix. It affects the person down the street uh, that you come in contact with, and those people could die, and we want to save those people. But yeah, absolutely, you can go around the block, you can walk your dog, you can do the normal activities that you would do, a nature hike, riding your bicycle, things like that. Right, so uh, we're going to have to look at how we do the press conferences. Uh, we, I, I noticed as I'm looking out here, every well, we only allow one camera in here, uh, and I've noticed that we have all spaced out six feet apart from each other, which, uh, so we're following the guidance. I didn't count exactly how many people in the room, but we are close to 10 if we're not there. Are we one over? Oh, we are quite a bit over. So, yeah, so uh, next time uh, some of you reporters may have to, some of our other people may actually have to stay outside. I have a couple of uh, questions for Commissioner. Sure. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you about um, the rental assistance here in Seminole County. Sure. Uh, what can you tell us about that, and how do we uh, make it so that more people get the assistance, uh, whereas in Orange County they had to close the whole thing down because just so many people asked for it? Correct. So. So that's another aspect of, of the impacts of this event. So we've been monitoring that. What we have did initially is we dropped our assistance level from a $2,500 assistance level down to a $1,500 level so we could help more, more individuals and more families. We're also looking at additional revenue streams. <clears throat> our, we understand that the latest uh, bill that was passed in D.C. is going to have funding in there to help with some rental assistance. We also are looking at community partners and other CBDG funds and so forth that the state pro provide to us to help that. We know that number is going to increase. Our desire was not to cut, if, if at all possible, cut anybody out of the equation because we knew this was going to uptick. So we've just drawn ours back to a lower level in hopes of helping more families and getting people more help people, when they most need it. And people understand there's not an unlimited supply of money out there. It's, Correct. There is a, a limit that you guys have to work with. Right, exactly. I mean, right now, I think we've drawn our, our amount down to about $1.5 or $1.7 million of available funds. And as you can imagine, as more people lose their jobs, uh, with the new order from the governor, we suspect there are going to be more people out of work. Uh, so it's another challenge we in government uh, are going to be faced with, but we've just got to work as a community to get people there. The, the nonprofits that are here today are filling a lot of voids, and we're very thankful for that. 
Uh, they're going to continue to be impacted. So we would ask that uh, you know those in the public that can make donations, please reach out to them uh, and, and do so. And we asked about uh, meetings, uh, commissioner meetings, board meetings, things that the public want to put their input in. But they can't go there. Um, we've heard complaints about that. Sure. Why not hold off a lot of these things uh, until this is over and then pick them back up? Sure, good question. So everybody's struggling with that, and we've been given guidance from the governor as of two weeks ago on how we can conduct those businesses. The one thing that I think a lot of the public doesn't understand, there are statutory requirements on certain aspects of business that must take place in the county. We need to be doing budget amendments. We need to be doing things to keep the roads open, traffic lights working, drainage working, all the things that help make a safe area. Your, your rental assistance is yet another. Um, that may take a commission meeting to determine, uh, do we have reserves that we're able to dip into in order to help facilitate that? Um, these are trying times for everybody in government, uh, open to the sunshine. You know, in our, our belief is we're going to make available public input from whatever technology exists, whether that be a phone-in conversation, whether that be an email, whether that be a, a, a video conference type situation. We just ask the public to be patient as we all try to figure this out and do what's best for the people. I think one of the things I was uh, seeing a lot of people complaining about is when it comes to the developers. Um, who are up in front of these boards and pushing these things to see if they can get a pass. Sure. That's one of the things the public is really upset about, is that they want to be there to voice their opinion. Sure. Of course they are. And, and, of course, I think this will facilitate that by either phoning in, sending emails, having those emails read at a meeting by a staff member. Um, for the most part, I think all the commissioners have, are receiving emails, they're getting public input, and facilitating that at the day of the meeting you know, the goal is keep people separated, keep that down to less than 10, keep six apart. But at the same time, we want the public to have input. So we're looking at all technology in order to afford that. My, my belief is we'll get there with patients from the community. I also want to take a minute and remind everyone why a lot of people are staying at home. Today is National Census Day. It's very important to your community uh, in events just like this. It's amount of funding that we get as a community, so I would urge you while you're sitting at home, it can all be done online, just go to the census webpage, log in, do your information, that way we all have, have been counted, it's important everybody be counted, so we would appreciate if everybody would do that as well. Any other questions for staff? Now that the, uh, the governor has issued the safer at home order, yes. what does that mean for the county? Well, what that means for the county, it means a couple things. Uh, I think a lot of us will be uh, grateful that we have some consistency across the entire state so we don't have a puzzle of different entities doing different things but again I think and I'm very proud here in Seminole County we are ahead of that we're actually more strict uh, and we're actually pushing what we believe is healthier for our community by main mandating that six-foot distance the social distancing and gathering of ten or less um, you know, we want to adhere to the governor's order, and we, our expectation people will. But here in Seminole County, uh, remember, we were the first to do an emergency order in the entire state. Uh, we were also the first to do uh, a social distancing that really, uh, we believe, and all experts agree, actually do the best to stop the, the spread of the, the COVID-19. Anything else? Well, again, I want to thank everybody for attending. Thanks, and thank you all in the media for being patient and uh, being here to help us get out the message. I urge all of our citizens to pay close attention to our website, uh, the Facebook Live updates, as well as our citizen hotline for any uh, thing you may need at 407-665-0000. God bless and be safe.